Chapter 1. What is repentance? What does it actually mean to repent? In a recent national survey, churchgoers were asked to articulate what the word repentance meant to them. The survey resulted in an assortment of answers. The majority of those who participated in the survey stated that they believed the word repentance meant one or more of the following, to feel sorry about something one did or failed to do, to feel remorseful about some act and to ask forgiveness for it, to walk forward in a church service to formally ask Jesus into one's life. Before we go any further, let's include you in this survey. How would you define the meaning of the word repent? Try to answer that question before reading on. The word repent is a very important New Testament word. The first instances where this word is used in the New Testament are in Matthew chapter 3 verse 2 and Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 by John the Baptist and Jesus respectively. John the Baptist proclaimed, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 3 verse 2. John's ministry was literally launched with that one word, repent. Jesus, too, began his public ministry by beckoning his listeners to repent. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, Jesus commenced his preaching ministry when he said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Like John the Baptist, Jesus knew that the only way to enter the kingdom of God was through repentance. Then in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter launched his preaching ministry with the same requirement of repentance. Just as John the Baptist and Jesus had called on men to repent, so Peter told his audience in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Repent. Peter understood that repentance is the birth canal through which people enter the kingdom of God. In other words, it is the only way to truly be delivered from the kingdom of darkness and to emerge spiritually reborn and filled with the God kind of life. The word repent, used by John the Baptist, Jesus, and Peter, is the Greek word metanoio. It is the compound of the words meta and nos. The word meta means to turn, and the word nos means to the mind. When these two words are compounded, the new word describes, in its most basic sense, a change of mind or a complete conversion. The word metanoio reflects a turn, a change of direction, a new course, and a completely altered behavior and view of life. In the New Testament, this Greek word is used to denote a complete, radical, total change. It means a decision to completely change one's thoughts behavior, and actions, or to entirely turn around in the way one is thinking, believing, or living. Thus, the word repent in the New Testament gives the image of a person changing from top to bottom, a total transformation, wholly affecting every part of a person's life. I must point out the importance of the word nos contained in this definition of repentance. As we have seen above, the word nos is the Greek word for the mind. This means that the decision to repent lies in the mind, not in the emotions. This is not the same as a fleeting sorrow for past actions. Rather, it is a solid, intellectual decision to turn about face, take a new direction, and revise the pattern of one's life. Emotions may accompany repentance, but they are not required in order to repent. True repentance is a mental choice to leave what is displeasing to God and to turn toward Him with all of one's heart and mind in order to follow Jesus. A prime example of such a turning can be seen in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonian believers when he commended them for the way in which he had turned to God from the idols to serve the living and true God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. The word turned in this verse is the Greek word Epistropho, which means to completely turn in a new direction. Paul said the Thessalonian believers turn from idols to serve the living and true God. The word serve is important for it tells us that the turn that they made produced a life change with visible fruit that reflected the transformation. It is the word dolio, a word for a servant, 
implying that the Thessalonian believers had fully left behind idolatry and had completely dedicated their lives to serving Jesus. By using the word dolio, Paul informed us that the Thessalonians didn't just claim to have repented, they showed it by changing the way they thought and lived and served. Their dramatically different outward behavior was guaranteed proof that real repentance had occurred. The word repent, from the Greek word metanoio, denotes a change of mind that has accompanying actions. Repentance is not the mere acceptance of a new philosophy or new idea. It is a conversion to truth so deep that it results in a total life change. The idea of an across-the-board transformation is intrinsic to the word repent. In fact, if there is no transformation, change of behavior, or change of desire in a person who claims to have repented, it is doubtful that true repentance ever occurred no matter what the person claims. Real repentance begins with a decision to make an about-face and to change, but its proof can be witnessed as a person's outward conduct consistently complies with that decision. We sing the old song, Just as I am without one plea, and certainly we do come to God just as we are. However, God doesn't expect us to remain the way we are. He expects change, and that is what repentance is all about. As you will see in the pages to come, repentance is a part of the lifestyle of a serious believer. We repent to begin our relationship with God, and as we grow in our walk with God, the Holy Spirit will continue to reveal things in our lives that need to change. When He opens our eyes to those things that are displeasing to Him, we must be willing to repent, to make an intelligent decision to adjust our thinking and our behavior to conform to God's ways.